11 days ago, I released a poll on YouTube asking what video you guys would be most interested in, and 49% said full breakdown of my character animation work. So I'm gonna do that. I broke it down into four main parts, and this is just my workflow. It's not necessarily the best, but it's what I prefer to do, and I think it's efficient and has some great tips regardless. So the first step is the design. And this is where I gather references and inspiration and kind of compile them on an application called Pure Ref. And it's free, it's simple. It's what I use to put this poll snippet on. You can just drag and drop, copy and paste, and they can scale like that. And you can label. It's just a super simple program. It's very important to have references. And the second part is to actually start sketching and blocking in making silhouettes. And I can't stress enough. I'll just open up a new page about just doing a ton of sketches, not just doing one or two, but doing a ton, whether that just be like blocking quick silhouettes like this. It's a terrible example, but not just doing one and picking it, doing a ton. And I can show you some of my concept work for Shogun Showdown. But if we go through, this is some of the first concepts I did for them. And you can see there's a bunch of variations of these characters and we only end up using one of them. So we ended up using one of these and there's just a ton of variations and it just goes on and on. And the next one is shading, making highlights in your details. And I usually flatten all of these onto one frame just as, just because it's quicker. You'll see later on how I splice and set up my layers, everything for animation. So once you're done all your silhouettes and sketching and you've got a good idea, you can start adding those highlights and those shadows and getting a base for what your character is going to be. And you can see that with this guy here is I had the silhouette and then I started adding some shadows, the skin and kind of a sword and eventually branched off from that. And this might be the second one or the third one perhaps. And you just slowly add and you can simply just copy that and start grabbing this color and then adding more to it, just getting a feel for the character. And then you can even add more if you want and you just keep going from there. Eventually you can add some different colors, some kind of harness here, and you can explore shades. Just building off that silhouette. A strong silhouette will go a long way in your character design. So if you're not happy with the silhouette, I personally, I just ditch them. I just move on onto the next one, start a different silhouette. And there's different ways to do silhouettes as well. You can start off by just using blocks. Say that's you want the head to be that size. You want the body to be that. You want the legs to be somewhere there. Or you can do long legs, tiny body, even smaller head. Or big, big legs, medium body, tiny head, big head, small body, legs. And these are just guidelines you can use. You can do a new layer. You can change the opacity down. And use these as a guide for your silhouettes. And then you can start blocking in your characters. And they're just guidelines, so you don't need to stay in them. You can go, you can explore, go out a bit. You can add some hands there. And then you can, you know, if you're happy with that silhouette, move on to the next silhouette, next one. You know, do 10, 12, 20 however many you want and then you can start adding details to the silhouettes you know pick four or five that you really like or do them all and just start adding color or the highlights and the, sh the shadows and add a bit more and this is going to be really quick but get the idea you can add an eye kind of a core middle piece you can add some something to the armor start adding details and all of a sudden you have you know a character that you might want to animate. I won't carry on too much with that, but you understand, gather, start sketching, blocking, silhouettes, and then once you're happy with those, start adding highlights, details, shading. So the next step is setting up the animation. I'm super grateful to have today's video sponsored by Skillshare. If you don't already know, Skillshare is the largest, and I mean the largest online community for creatives. It has everything, classes like art and animation. It even has pixel art courses, blender courses, and all sorts of game dev courses. Skillshare can help you take your career, skills, hobbies, passions to the next level. 
I've been obsessed with the idea of animating and creating in Blender. And this course by Southern Shoddy 3D called Your First Day in Blender really stood out. Blender and other animation applications can be very intimidating. And the goal in this course is to get you comfortable with the interface so you can move on to more advanced things. I downloaded Blender months ago and I've felt like I've never really made any real progress. And that's probably due to the fact that I've never had a structured lesson or guidance. And Skillshare has exactly that. I highly recommend Skillshare. And in fact, the first 500 people to use my link will receive one month free. So you can try it out, see if it's something you like while supporting the channel and leveling up your skills. I wanna thank Skillshare so much for sponsoring this video. So after you're done your concepts and you pick a character, say you pick this one for your final character, you can copy it, open up a new sheet, make a bunch of layers. I usually paste it in the middle, give your character in the middle, and then you can start slicing up the character. And in the end, you'll end up with something like this. This is a bigger character. And my VFX layers have a ton, but the character itself, it has a head. I'll just turn off the VFX here. It has a head, the left hand, the right hand, the gold shoulder, the belt, the chest armor, and other stuff. I have muscles. So this is details afterwards I added. The silhouette itself is just the body underneath. And you can end up with 10 or 12 layers. It will be far more enjoyable to animate when everything's set up. So back to this hero here. I would just highlight that hat, perhaps that the head goes with the hat, so I just highlight that, make sure I get all of the head. I would copy that, paste it on a new layer, jump back to that layer, and delete it. And you can name that head, and we can name this one body, and we can also take this wire here, highlight that, hold shift, get all the pieces, copy it, paste it below, go back to that layer, delete it, and name it wire. And then all of a sudden we have this wire. And you can do that as much as you want with the hands, with each leg, which I highly recommend separating the legs for the run animation. It will be far easier. Separate as many pieces as you can. And once you get familiar with your workflow, you can combine some things like a hand and a sword. You would usually keep those on the same layer. So the body armor, in some cases, you would just leave with the body instead of separating them. Sometimes you like armor jiggling, sometimes you don't, so it's up to you. And then even the, the hair strand, say you want this little hair strand to animate, you could even copy and paste that hair, and we'll just say hair, and then you can see it isn't there anymore, so we'll just fill in this with that. And you can see now the hair, we want to animate it quickly. We can just simply go on the hair layer and then animate it back and forth. And let's see if that looks okay. Not the best, but you can see over here, the hair is now waving back and forth. And it's far more easier than keeping that on the head layer and filling in. So that is slicing up and organizing your layer and naming them. You can also color code, which is if you have, if you double click a layer and you click on this user data right here, it will bring up this color code and you can say, this is the head. I'm just gonna make it this color. You can make it any color, you can make it red. The body, you can do the same thing, red the wire, and so on. I don't usually color code them, but I can see how it would be beneficial. And then the last point of setting up your animations is to think about the animation. Don't just go in blind. When I go in blind, it's usually my worst work. I don't like it. So if I'm not sure what I wanna do, I usually sleep on it. And sometimes I sleep on it for a week and I just go back and forth in my head. Okay, what will make sense? What will look good? What kind of combo can I do? And that's exactly what I did in this 10 hour ch challenge in the last video is I really, I had 10 hours to work. So I was thinking about it at night and I really just planned that combo in my head before, before executing it. I knew I wanted to do a couple punches, an uppercut spin and an aggressive land. So I knew that going in, I didn't just go in blind. And I think that's pretty underrated. So with all that said, let's move on to the third kind of step, and that's the animation order. And I was debating putting this one in or not, but it's something I've done consistently for the last year or two. And when I start animating, I start with attacks now. I used to start with the idle and run, and idles are one of the easier ones. You can do that in an hour or so, and then runs, they're a hit or miss with how quickly you can do it. Some runs end up taking way too long and you spend a lot of time on it. But the reason I start with an attack is if I animate a character 
and the attack is really well done. It's perfect. It will motivate me to do everything else and I'm not going to waste time doing an idle run and then not figure out the attack. So to me, the attack is the most important. So I start off with the attack. I usually post it on my socials and if it does really well, I'm like, okay, this character has it. This is a good one to release and finish. And I used to start with the idle and run. And when I would get to the attack, it would be lackluster. It wouldn't be great. It wouldn't do that well. And then doing the rest would be far more tedious and it wouldn't be as motivated. So I kept that in because it's something I've been doing for a while now. Start with attack. If you love the attack, great. The rest are straightforward. Idols and runs follow the same patterns workflow within themselves and attacks are always going to be different they're going to be unique so start with an attack and then idle run and then death jump fall and more attacks if you want so that's just a quick step which brings us to the final step of the four which is the breakdown of an animation which within itself is as big as all these steps together so we'll quickly go through it and once I have my character, everything's set up like this or this. I start with keyframes and this is called pose to pose animation. And what I do is I'll be starting with the attack. So I make three or four keyframes of that attack and make sure the poses themselves. So pose to pose animation, the poses, each pose look great. So you can see in this 10 hour frame, if you take all the keyframes, this land is going to be a keyframe and it looks good. I'm happy with that. And then of course the idle pose is the initial keyframe and then just move some armor, but I won't save this. And then you can see the punch is a keyframe. So now we have one, two plus the land. So three, and this is a long attack. Most aren't going to be this many keyframes. Let's say if you have a three punch combo, you have a, the idle first punch, the second punch right here and uppercut say is another one and then the spins are a different kind of part i wouldn't add it to the the original keyframes but then they land say you have the three four five keyframes figured out pose to pose the rest is going to be so much easier and i can't stress that enough start with your pose to pose animation i see some people to start off with straight ahead doing going from the idle keyframe to the punch or the sword swing and doing straight ahead to me i would never do that some people do and they're really good with it but i recommend doing pose to pose animation and then filling the in-betweens later once you're done the pose to pose, you can then really focus on the flow of the animation. Get the timing right when adding in-betweens. This is going to be a real quick example. Say you have this keyframe and you have this keyframe here with the head. You can start adding in-between frames here and here. You can turn on onion skin and you can really get the flow of it. If you want a straight, smooth, steady, you can make one in-between directly in-between this. And I'm just going to move the head to speed this up. And then you can see here it's moving there and then just in a straight line. And then you can start adding ease in frames and ease out frames. And then you can start to see the flow of the animation looking better. And you can just build upon that. You can even add more if you want and more here. And then you can see how the flow is looking a lot nicer. And you can do this with the body parts themselves or if the sprite is larger, you can use colors. Instead, you can make a, a frame that's just green and you can say, okay, I want to move the head here and you can use just quick art objects to get the flow and really get that entire animation feeling good before you start on any details or adding highlights and, and secondary animations. So focus on the flow, get the timing right, adding in between frames of those pose to pose animations. Once you're happy with the flow, you can start adding VFX. And the reason why I add VFX at this point is you can cover up any imperfections in the keyframes or any parts that look odd. So if we look through this one, you got bubbles, you got this lightning strike. If we turn off the VFX, you could not worry about this kind of belt moving too much, which you can see here, it's not perfect. It kind of jumps around a bit, but this VFX kind of takes your eyes away from it. And this is probably a better example. The fire can cover up a lot of the leg imperfections. You can see here, I didn't put too much effort into making this leg look that great because, and you can see here, it's not the best. You can also see I missed some muscles there, but no one, hopefully no one notices because this fire just hides it all. And even these, some of these frames here where it's spinning, they don't look like much. All these VF happening are covering up 
all the imperfections. And then you can see the spins and then the land with the, the dust particles can cover up stuff. But this keyframe, I knew I was gonna hold for a good 10 frames, so I wanted it to look great, but you get the idea. So that's why I start adding VFX. And that doesn't mean you need to add all the VFX and finish it right then. You can just add the big ones and figure out where you wanna go for it. And once you've done that, you can start doing the details and secondary animations. So secondary animations are gonna be things like capes, bags, hair, things that happen because the main animation is moving. So secondary in this would be the belt moving, and it's only moving because the body's momentum went forward and it moved the belt forward and it kind of swings. And this animation itself only has that kind of secondary animation, but this whole animation I did with colors. So I basically just made the hands, belt, everything, chest piece was just color coded. So I also started adding the details, which is just a lot of cases you can get away with copy and pasting the hand and then altering it a little bit. So that's what I do last. And, and at that point, the animation, you, you got a good understanding of everything and you know what it is. And here's another example of kind of everything split apart. And once you're done that attack animation, you just repeat this breakdown of the idle run and death and everything. And that's essentially what I do, my entire animation workflow. And the fifth kind of bonus step is, is prepping it for social media. And what I do then is I save a new file, um, just calling it social or something. And then I essentially, this one has two weapons. So I'm just going to delete the spear. I'm going to take everything and flatten it. And then I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to make sure I click on the entire layer, shift V, and I'm going to hold V to drag all the frames, double click it. I'm going to change the opacity. And then you have this sweet shadow that took full 10 seconds to do. And I deleted some hands by accident. So he has no hands, but I'm not going to save this. And then you can add a new layer and add text to it. And there you have it set up for social. So that's the fifth part of the whole process. And then I can use those for posting on the itch page to sell it as an asset. And it just showcases the entire animation. I hope some of these tips help you with the workflow and you can take some and create your own. Thank you so much. I'll see you next time.